Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Right, honorable, it is good to have you in studio as we... Um do our last edition of the platform in the year 2023. But of course, we would want to review how the year 2023 has been for you as, as, as Honorable Nakachin, the PF Secretary General, politically. How do, you th how do you think the political space has been in the year 2023? Well, 2023 has been uh, somewhat a very dramatic year. Mm -hmm. The number of things that have happened we never imagined that uh, they would uh, uh, happen in a country that is uh, uh, marching towards 60 years of um, mm -hmm. you know, being free from colonial rule and oppressive rule. Uh, that 60 years, we had uh, somewhere around 17 years of uh, 27 years of one party you know, said uh, sort of governance uh, one party perspective a democracy uh, which as many people rejected in 1990 and then we chose to go to plural or multi-party democracy in 1990 1991 mm -hmm. uh, obviously even when uh, Dr. Kaunda had just come from an election in 1998 and he was to be subjected to an election in 1993. Mm -hmm. um, the demands of the Zaman people were too loud for him to continue in office. So he had to cut short his tenure and then uh, eventually succumb to the you know, people's will. And uh, from 1991 to today, uh, what was this, you know, expected is that uh, uh, would be m making progress every time that we have a, d a change of um, government. Right. Um, the change of government from UNIP to MMD brought in, within itself some, you know, progress in terms of, um, you know, having uh, multi-party democracy. There are a number of mistakes, obviously, that uh, MMD may have made, but you can also, you know, recount parallel to those mistakes very progressive um, uh, strides that were made in, you know, not only the introduction of multi-party democracy, but strengthening our democracy. Uh, by the time MMD was leaving office in 2011, uh, even on the economic side of things, uh, the reforms that uh, MMD had undertaken had both positive and negative. On the positive side, I think the private sector thrived. Mm -hmm. On the negative side, I think uh, the privatization program uh, seemed to have been more tutored uh, towards uh, uh, handing over the industrial base of the country to the private sector. And in the process, we ended up losing everything that we had in terms of uh, industries that to guarantee productivity in a very addition to our raw materials. And uh, we, have, uh, we degenerated to a point of having as it were, a country that is dependent on imports on everything. And uh, it has its own telling effect that how come we're having difficulties in terms of managing the, the stability or strength of the, uh, the local currency, the kwacha, yeah. because we have to always spend more kwacha to get you know, forest, you know, foreign currency mm -hmm. for us to purchase because we're getting everything that we consume from outside. Um... PF who got into government in 2011, uh, realizing some of the mistakes that uh, MMD uh, may have made. Mm. The first thrust of Patriotic Front um, 
getting getting into government was clearly infrastructure development because obviously as a result of privatization as a result of all these things that had taken place the industrial base was gone infrastructure was dilapidated there wasn't really uh, any investment in terms of um, uh, I mean, a capital investment in terms of having to build capacity uh, in uh, sectors that guarantee or I, you know, a critical aid to productivity, one of them being energy. So you saw that uh, as Patriotic Front, there was a heavy investment in, um, in the capacity, in, uh, building capacity in terms of the Kafir Gorge Lower, uh, the Kaliba and other, you know, power generation plants that have, we, you know, were put in place. Uh, that was to ensure that um, the deficit that inevitably, inevitably had come up because of, for example, from ni- the 1970s that uh, when we last had such huge investment in that sector, the population has grown from 3 million, had grown from 3 million at that time to close 16, 17 million at the time that uh, Patriotic Front was getting to government. So the demand, obviously, on um, uh, the power generation plants that we had was uh, greater than what it could uh, be able to generate. By the time Patriot Front were getting out of government, we had, um, you know, you know, surplus in terms of what we're generating to a point where the UPND, in an overzealous manner, attempted to start the, you know, exporting. So from the performance in terms of economy, in terms of infrastructure development. I don't think we can beat a drum more than what the Zambian people already know. Whether it's the road sector, it is a, you know, educational sector. If it's a health, we built hospitals, we built, you know, schools, we built universities. Um, we 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 have put up reasonable infrastructure to guarantee that the economy would be able to rise up. Twenty twenty three. Some people feel that the infrastructure that you put up as a PF is not something that can last as a lifetime. Well, I don't know. Especially whether, with the roads. I don't know um, whether that argument is anything to go by uh, because uh, you always have to uh, discern and deduce when a statement is being issued for political reasons or indeed there's uh, facts to that. There has been a narrative the UPND in, UP, in opposition were driving to suggest that there was corruption and that uh, yes, there's infrastructure, but the price you know, for which um, uh, these uh, environmental projects are being, you know, priced is too high, mm-hmm. uh, maybe because of some kickbacks and all that. That is a, a story, a, street, a story on the street. When you come to challenge uh, in terms of the actual facts, you discover that those are all rhetoric. Uh, we didn't have, obviously, the financial mass of the country to undertake the kind of infrastructure you know, we have put up, um, whether it's roads, schools, and so on. You needed to use other people's money um, for us to be able to build that uh, base, which is basically capital for a country, because the moment you put up infrastructure, you are guaranteed that development in economic and productivity will be guaranteed. Mm. Uh, And therefore, you should be able to pay back uh, uh, the money that you uh, have borrowed. There is no business... There's no country or individuals that have progressed economically without using other people's money. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. Even for you here, if you decide to venture into business, you will face the reality of the fact that you have to look for cheap money somewhere uh, for you to be able to capitalize your business, for it to grow and be able to be productive enough, have the goods you need to sell and services you need to offer to the people them to transact with you does this also come down to the fact uh, th- does this also come down to why you, under your, uh, your your government you borrowed a lot well the borrowing a lot is a, an, a, a story of the UPND when you look at what they have borrowed themselves in the last two years that have been in government um, close to about six billion dollars compared to somewhere around 14 or 14 plus minus the local debt Maybe we're going around $17 billion in 10 years to $6 billion in two years. If you were you know, to uh, calculate how much they would have borrowed if they stayed in 10 years, uh, that six times five, that is giving you already about $30 billion. 
you know, and um, for us, the 17 or so million billion dollars that we borrowed, we can point to, for example, Kafue, you know, Gojloa, which was mm -hmm. somewhere around $2 billion, slightly above $2 billion investment in that uh, plant that is there, that even Mr. Aka in the HLM, you know, went priding himself that at least there's this investment that, uh, you know, was undertaken. Infrastructure, I mean, the roads that have been done in this country, uh, we are now no longer a landlocked country, we are a land-linked country, so everybody's uh, beginning to, you know, to boast. Uh, look at the bridges, look at the dams. One of the greatest deficits that we had as a country was that um, the people that had access to clean and safe water um, were below, you know, 45%. By the time that PF was getting out of government, we we're boasting ourselves going towards around 85 to 90 percent of our people, the entire population, having access to clean and safe water. Mm -hmm. That is an achievement that sometimes people, you know, do not talk about. But it is an achievement that has come because of one investment in, you know, uh, building of dams, the investment in terms of uh, thinking of boreholes, investment in terms of. Uh, uh, the water recirculation, you know, plants that have been, uh, you know, put up across the country from Lusaka. Uh, I think almost all the provincial capitals had a huge investment in that regard, and uh, uh, it has been able to alleviate uh, issues of waterborne diseases and things like that. It's just sad that, as it were, because of certain areas of mismanagement, we are having a situation in Lusaka where we have, after a long time, outbreaks of uh, cholera which is very, very, very sad. But you had asked a question about um, uh, 2023, 2023 and in relation to politics. Right. I must state that Misaka and the HLM and the UPND, from the time they got into government, um, they have come with a, a misguided philosophy, um, which basically was a cliche on the street, that politics are dirty. But I think for them, they have taken it literally that politics indeed are that You've heard the president talking about Mingarato, you've heard the president talking about uh, how they will be, you know, use trickery uh, for them to sustain their stay in, in government. Um, and uh, for Patriotic Front, uh, the, the tricker and Mingarato emerged, first of all, um, uh, through an attempt by uh, the UPND to deplete the numbers of opposition MPs in parliament. Right. Of course, they had petitioned every MP, they had petitioned every council chairperson and mayors, they had petitioned all our councillors across the country. Now, if we were to argue the UPND felt that uh, those elections that they won were fraudulent, and they were all, all elected MPs, all elected councillors, all elected mayors were a product of fraud. It then brings a question, how is it that they are legitimate in office? You understand? Say for the fact that the only other argument would be that it was a political ploy to see whether they can begin from the very first day to reduce the influence of the opposition uh, in institutions that are mandated to provide checks and balances, one of them, and the most critical, being parliament. Uh, even when the courts had said, no, uh, we find that there was nothing fraudulent about the election of our members of parliament, you know that uh, there was this unprecedented uh, you know, compromise of the principle of separation of powers. All of a sudden, the executive seemed to have been exerting pressure on parliament, for example, uh, to do the unconventional. We had nine members of parliament whose seats had been notified at the high court level, but they had appealed in a constitutional court. And we all know that uh, there was even a ruling before that uh, when a member of parliament whose seat has been notified appeals in a constitutional court, that appeal in itself serves as a, as a stay. But the Speaker of the National Assembly, against all precedents and the, the decided cases, decided to expel members of parliament, which was a sign that this government is intolerant uh, and will not really adhere to the rule of law. Um, of course, the matters went to the court, you know, constitutional court and uh, decisions were made and members of parliament went back to, to parliament. 
We had two members of parliament, uh, Honorable Rusambo, Honorable uh, uh, Mananji, whose seats were finally nullified. Right. And when they were nullified, the decisions, as it were, even at law, was that uh, they still qualified to participate. But because they were very popular in Kabushi and in Kwacha, the UPND decided they were going to use um, ECZ. It started by, first of all, Mr. Akainde Ichinema appointing UPND cadres as commissioners. The chairperson of ECZ uh, in, uh, uh, at, uh, at ECZ, uh, Madam Mangara you know, Zalomis, is a UPND cadre. She, there is evidence to that fact in the sense that she opened a campaign and was all over campaigning for UPND in UPND regalia. Mr. McDonald Chipenze is a UPND cadre. He even attempted to stand and applied on UPND ticket to stand in Chirondo. We raised alarm that uh, why does every Zambian, yes, who qualifies can be appointed to serve in such institutions, but there should just be a moral requirement that those who are appointed to such critical positions must not only be see, no, uh, known, but also seen not to be affiliated to any political party. There are many competent and the qualified Zambians that could have been up, given the opportunity to serve in those portfolios. Mm -hmm. But as it were, the very fear that the Zambian people have always held that if you appoint non cadres to such positions, they are prone to advance partisan you know, in, you know, interest in those institutions. What did we see? To, we saw against the law the provision of the, the disqualification of Honorable Malangi, the disqualification of Honorable Boma Nosambo by the ECZ, who have no mandate whatsoever uh, to actually determine who qualifies who doesn't qualify. The only role that the ECZ are to play when it comes to, for example, uh, accepting or rejecting nomination is whether somebody has presented uh, the necessary qualification uh, uh, that somebody require, is, is required. If they don't have a great of at that particular point, they'll say, no, but uh, you haven't met the requirements. If they haven't uh, fulfilled the statutory requirements, those are the things that will be the basis for which they cannot accept. It means that somebody has not presented all the documentation. But the moment somebody has presented all their credentials as required by the law, this is that has no business at that particular point. It's just to say, uh, you have, you have found it. It is any other person or party that is aggrieved that is given a chance after the nomination, seven days, I want to believe, is seven days or 14 days after the nomination, that they can be able to challenge or petition the nomination of that person they felt or believe doesn't qualify. Mm -hmm. And then the tribunal will be setting if it's for, you know, councillors and council chairperson, if it is uh, for uh, members of parliament, the high court will then hear that petition. And within that period of time, they will determine whether that person qualifies or not to have failed, failed the nomination. But this time around, the ECZ donated to themselves powers that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. So it become, became a sign that we have in government a president, a political party that does not have any regard or respect for the rule of law. That, you know, act in Kwacha constituency, in Kabush constituency, was daylight robbery by Mr. Aka in the HLM. And to demonstrate that Mr. Aka in the HLM was determined to rob the people of Kavusha and Kwacha of their members of parliament, is that even when the court here in Lusaka had, you know, uh, granted an injunction and stopped the ECZ from proceeding with those elections, Mr. Aka in the HLM continued to campaign, disregarding the pronouncements of the court. And when eventually we raised the alarm after two, three days, at the airport, like as if he's mocking the Zaman people. In Ishina Chita Nemulandai, in Nemunan, you know, you saw those gestures that you're whatever. Literally mocking the Zaman people as though. Honorable Chinda, when we speak about the rule of law, some people, you know, some, some members of the public feel that you as a UP and that there's the patriotic front have got no right to even talk about the rule of law because you, are, you, you did not respect the rule of law at all during your, your reign. Listen, um, I don't know why Zambian people, the Zambian people uh, always want to justify mm. a wrong with what could be perceived to have been a wrong before. 
you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. First of all, it's not correct that PF did not follow the rule of law. That is propaganda from UPND. There is no constituency in this country in the 10 years that we were in government that was stolen by PF from the UPND. Every by-election that was undertaken during the time that we were in government, if it was notified by the, by the courts, every political party participated without any of them being disqualified. Right. Now, if we, what is happening today can be justified against the performance of PF, let's compare mangoes for mangoes. Just two, two, two three days ago, um, I mean last week, uh, not two, three days ago, last week, we had nominations of councillors in Kayo, in Masabombwe, in, in, in Ompika, and also in Shwangando. We have our own internal matters that are before court, that are yet to be resolved. And we know that those internal matters are sponsored by UPND. You understand? In an attempt to try and uh, dismember and destroy PF, they have sponsored a stooge by Misaka and HRM. And he has directed institutions of government, police and everybody, to protect and aid you know, uh, that stood to destroy PF. Are these just well, mere allegations, or you do have proof as the, U as the Patriotic Front that the UPND is sponsoring the, con I am the, sure the confusion that, my, that happens in my, that is my happening dear lady, in the party? that uh, even yourself, you can no longer doubt that that stood is a UPND project. UPND MPs, UPND officials, uh, the president himself has publicly, even before matters are concluded in court, acknowledged their product in those two years. The president is at the airport without any shame, recognizing uh, a con. Uh, no, just be courageous. You know, don't be afraid. How can the president be telling somebody? Don't be afraid. Just be courageous if he's not interested in the affairs of PF. And some members of the UPND feel that if, if the Speaker recognizes him as a leader of opposition in Parliament, then you know, what, what can the President do? But we also have a Speaker mm. who has just embarrassed us, all of us, in this country. I don't think Mary Muti can walk with her head high anywhere in this world and say I'm a Speaker. Even when the imperialist organization tried to sanitize her and honor her that she's one of the best speakers, she just became a laughing stock. Because really this parliament that has been revered and respected for all these decades, even during one party state, the speakers of the National Assembly were respected men and women. During MMD, during PF, I mean uh, uh, Judge Matibini, uh, all of us were proud. Even when he just came from the bench and appointed, um, mm -hmm. you know, speaker, uh, at some point the only weakness that uh, eventually we overcame, he seemed to have been conducting, you know, business in the house as if he's a judge. Obviously, looking at where he was coming from, but along the way he quickly adjusted, learned on the job, and discovered that as a as a speaker, you're just an empire, and actually make the house so um, uh, conducive for members of parliament to be able to express themselves fully on behalf of the people they represent. But under her, Madam Neri Muti, unfortunately, clearly you can tell that the Neri Muti we knew before she was appointed speaker, and the Neri Muti we have come to learn as a speaker is basically a totally different, uh, you know, two di different personalities. The one as a speaker is controlled by some puppet master somewhere, and you can tell that mm, this behavior uh, and these, these are quotes, behavior. But otherwise, she's not herself. And you can see the stress on her face. Even when she's making some of the rulings that she's making, you can tell that this ruling is not her ruling. She painfully makes those rulings. But that comes to what I was saying. 2023 has been a very dramatic you know, year. It has seen you know, our parliament totally polarized. Mm -hmm. It has seen, this is a totally polarized. Councillors, 
how can ECZ donate powers that they don't have and say this time around uh, when a councillor is bringing documents for for nomination we want the adoption certificate to bear not only a signature but also the name of the president of that party and also the name and signature of the secretary general of that political party I mean, you just uh, add one or two, one, uh, you know, one plus one, you can tell that this is what targeted towards PF because of the fact that there have been these efforts to impose stooges as leaders of, you know, patriotic front. Look at what happened at the Central Society. A noble and the professional civil servant who guided the politicians to say what you are attempting to do is not attainable at law. The reason why political parties deposit their constitution is because as custodians uh, and, and the registrar of political parties and their constitutions, we are expected, at least at bare minimum, to ensure that whatever the business they conduct, it is in line with the provisions of their constitution. And looking at what has happened, even before we interrogate anything, there's nothing closer to what the constitution of patriotic front provides. Therefore, as the register of society, we would have been abrogating the constitution of the republic if we allowed this illegality to proceed. What did they do? They arrest a woman. He tried to force her to, you know, change office bearers. When she refused, uh, we went ourselves to verify because we knew what was going on and the interference from certain officers. I even went personally to go and confront the PS, to go and confront the minister uh, of armed affairs. Where I did not possibly go, and I should have done that, possibly was to go to state house and go to community house because we knew what was happening from the community house and what was happening from state house. Right. You know, we went to challenge these officers. All of them, their tongues were tongue were twisted. They were not telling the truth. A normal procedure of us wanting to get records at uh, Rachel Society, which is supposed to be, you know, open to every citizen. You just go if you are interested in PF. Go and pay a certain amount, I think it's about 250 you get the records. We paid and said, give us the records. They refused the, the Register of Society uh, officers to give us the records. Interference from high officers. We had to go to court to seek the court to make an order of a subpoena. Even when the officers, at the point of obeying a court order, a subpoena, mm. they gave us those uh, documents. What did they do? They harassed them. For obeying a court order and got them rid of the, got them out of those offices and surrendering uh, the chief registrar to uh, you know to cabinet and trying to say she was incompetent incompetent for obeying a court order they have brought in a judge as acting registrar of society and within few uh, you know days and so on there is a you know publicity that the uh, office bearers have been changed. Who are they fooling? Who are they fooling? The Zambian people? Right. Uh, the Zambian people? I can tell you, and I want, as we end the year, mm -hmm. to warn those who are in government, especially civil servants, don't allow yourself to be used. It's better to lose your job standing on principle and the truth. It's temporal than to compromise and find yourself in trouble. The judges in the, the judicial system and the judges, they must know that today you can succumb to pressure and manipulation and intimidate, intimidation from politicians. But politicians' tenure of office is temporal. It's temporal. Mr. Haka in the Ichilema is not God. Mr. Haka in the Ichilema is just a human being who offered himself to be president for five years? The right. ultimate authority for whether he can stay more than five years is the Zambian people. The Zambian people can even, can even shorten his tenure the way they did with Kaunda by demanding that this person is inimical to our interest. Therefore, we demand that, that an election take place sooner than 2026. But right. you, the judges, you, the civil servants, you who are in the judicial conference uh, authority, my uncle, Honorable Vincent Marambo, who I hold in great, 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 you know, um, honor and respect. 
There is also some uh, lady, I think, uh, some lousy lady. She used to be a judge, both here and I think international organization. Don't allow politicians to destroy your reputation and integrity in the face of political maneuvers. The Judicial Conference Authority has, you know, is now being perceived as a slaughterhouse for the careers of judicial officers. Right. Honorable Nagachinda, I'm sorry to cut you short, but the year 2023 as well saw you being appointed as a PF Secretary General. Others doubting your capabilities, uh, tracking it back to the times of the MMD and how the MMD came crumbling down. And others thinking you do not have the ability uh, to, to, to take the, the, the patriotic front back to, you know, to, to, to where it's supposed to be in, the, in 2026, as we know that you as a patriotic front is so confident that you might retain power in 2026. Well, uh, the moment you have people arguing from that end, mm. from that angle, that uh, you as an individual have no capacity, you have all these things and so on, they have missed a point. And that is where, uh, as a people, we keep on reg regressing or, or going backwards rather than moving forward. We need to kill this messianic syndrome in politics and the governance of this country. When somebody is uh, appointed to a particular position, they should not be viewed as the messiah. They should be viewed as one that has attributes they are contributing to the collective to make things work. If I was uh, appointed on the basis that I am the messiah to solve all the problems and uh, I have the answer and uh, solely myself have the answer um, to provide an answer to the demands of the Zambian people to have PF get back into government without the collective being in view, I would even refuse the appointment. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't just destroy me, you know, if the, if as it were, it works that we get into government and it will, it will definitely work, we'll get back into government. And I begin to hold myself as uh, the mighty and so on. This is where the arrogance that we are faced with in UPND comes from. Misaka in the Ichirema cannot be advised because the UPND allowed a, a fellow like that one who was just in the corporate world come into politics on the basis of tribe and so on and then present a scenario and perception around him that he is the Messiah. And because of regionalism and the tribal ethnic consideration, my relatives, for example, in southern province, um, because at some point UPND was reduced to just be a political party that they had members of parliament in southern province. And they knew that the only way they can win there, because of those elements, they have to stand on UPND. It warped the thinking and judgment of Nusaka in the Now, that monster that was built in UPND in opposition as a messiah, you have transported that monster into status. One of the reasons why Misaka in the country listened to his aides and advisors, as far as he's concerned, those the chaps around him, uh, uh, he's doing them a favor. They would not be what they are without him. Those members of uh, parliament, they would not be members of parliament without him. He did. Uh, that's why he says, I sacrifice and, and so on. I feel sorry for the UPND because ministers have no say. Have you seen ministers in this government looking free to go and articulate policies of, gov of government? No. Just a clique of a few who I know would be favored. And the ones who may speak are here and there. But most of the people in this government are intimidated. People are afraid. One of the reasons why we launched this binoculars just after the man was inaugurated was to break that spell that of fear that has had gripped the country. Everybody didn't know what had happened and what they had done to this country. Is the fear of Mr. Aka in the HDM among the citizens was so eminent after the revolt against PF. We were trying to say to the people, he is one of us. He is a citizen, he's a human being. Don't be afraid to question him. Let's start from now to provide checks and balances. What followed? It was arrest after arrest. But we have continued regardless of the arrest and intimidation and attempts on our lives and so on. Why? 
is because if we allow this messianic uh, indoctrinated fellow to proceed in the direction he's taking to entrench himself as a dictator, the damage will be too much. Right. So as we end the year, mm -hmm. Misaka in the Itirema has exposed himself in terms of his agenda to introduce a one-party state dictatorial you know, system of Ghana. And he wants to impose himself, like we are suggesting, a messiah. And we are saying, Mr. Kandachan, but there was only one messiah, Jesus Christ. For you, you can only contribute the bit we can, you can. And so far, your contribution has landed us in trouble, high cost of minimum, high cost of fuel, has rendered us with the now dollar going up to 26. All your promises have fallen you know, on their belly. You cannot even have the moral standing yourself to make any more promises, though the man has no shame. He had the four-hour you know, uh, press briefing trying to justify himself, trying to make more promises and so on. But you were told by one professor, uh, Rumumba, that when you find a person you know, talking for over one hour, trying to explain what he has done, means that he has done nothing. For four hours of Mr. Kainde's press briefing was just a confirmation that he has done nothing and the UPN have done nothing. We are ending the year on a sad note. I don't know how you, you know, celebrated uh, your there's, Christmas. There's nothing that you picked out from the, the president's uh, presser, even with regards, uh, you know, Mupani now having an equity partner. Look, I was uh, dumbfounded to have the president, you know, tell his minister of mines, hey, you are here at the press briefing. First of all, it shows that there's confusion. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Because the minister should have known if at all there was a deadline for which those things should have been concluded. But I can tell you, it is also to demonstrate to you that these ministers don't have the freedom to do their own thing. They are micromanaged. Minister, stand up. Uh, I expected that uh, by today you should have signed the, the agreement. Now, the agreement is not prepared by the minister. It is prepared by technocrats. It is expected to be subjected to legal scrutiny and due diligence by Attorney General's office. For the president to say, stand up and go. Before the end of this press briefing, I want a note that you have signed. What has he done? He has basically you know, um, you know, sabotaged the entire system of governance. That's the presidential decree. It means that the Attorney General, you are useless. Everybody else in the line of scrutiny, you are useless. All I want is a pen the signature. That's the, an, 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 a puppet mentality where people go and sign documents without fully understanding them. That's how come we have had low deals as a country is to get leaders who, in signing deals on behalf of the people of Zambia, they cast a blind eye. All they, they want is to please some foreigner. Where still if they are white? For this government. Honorable <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, Nakachinda, quickly, we move on to another issue. Obviously, we see that the, the, the confusion in the patriotic front is now settling down as we hearing that Honorable Mausampa is ready to participate in the actual convention of the party. Yeah, and we, we, that is something that would we'll need you to uh, give us clarity on where you are at with Honorable Mausampa. Wow. Uh, first of all, before I even go there, mm -hmm. to demonstrate that uh, uh, that group that uh, the UPND uh, attempted to impose as <coughs> leaders on, on, uh, on uh, PF, the scheme and plan, we had, we had already exposed it. The UPND had uh, hoped that, uh, had hoped that uh, uh, would have the conference early this year. Earlier they are targeted by end of 2022 and they had put a machine in place to try and take advantage of our own processes to create division. Later on, we had our own processes ignoring all that nonsense. But by you know, February, March of 2023, they became desperate because Eminently, the indica there were indications that we may not go to the conference as projected in 2022 in March. 
where Demos and Pahavu, a very strange press briefing, soliciting obviously for disciplinary action from the party, clearly. And when that happened, they set in motion, you know, through, you know, court processes. And then projected that by October, PF should have been completely destroyed. October of 2023. And as it were, we also, uh, in our projections, fell in their trap and set October as the month through which we're going to have a conference. Mm. It reconciled with their plan. But uh, other factors and other issues emerge. We could not proceed with what we had projected because we needed to conclude the process of amending our constitution and then also deal with elective conference. When they saw that that was not happening in October, by September, they had now decided, let's have a kamakaze, you know, induced in PF to just go and do and create confusion. And we know who their consultants are. Some of them out of vindictiveness and so on were advising that because this is what happened in MMD and so on. We should have possibly a program. I propose to media houses, whether Millennium uh, TV or other media houses. I think it's important that the history of this country is po properly, you know, um, analyzed and documented. People just carelessly refer to UNIP, carelessly refer to MMD. I was directly involved in the transition of MMD. And I'm also happy that one of the people that was not only directly involved in the transition of MMD, but also involved in the transition of UNIP, Mojave Rungu is still alive. I want to challenge media houses to invite me, invite Mojave Rungu. We discuss the dynamics and the truths and facts around UNIP. We discuss the facts and the dynamics and transitions around the MMD and be able to discuss some of the people who are misleading the Zambian people around what transpired in MMD. It has nothing to do with what is going on right now in Patriotic Front. PF never sponsored a sprinter group in MMD. Never. And I'm even surprised that the likes of uh, Felix Mutati, Mutoro Piri, um, uh, this fellow from Munari, what is his name? Uh, Mike Imposha and a few others who are from MMD and are now in UPND government. They are being insulted and their integrity assorted that they were a product of PF and they are quiet. Zambians are cowards. And uh, we need that spirit of uh, fear and cowardice to leave us if this country is to make progress. Just because you are part of that cabinet, you mean you can't control and correct the impression? Mutati and all of us who were demanding for the convention in 2016, prior to 2016, nowhere did PF participate. And I can tell you that having served in the PF government, first of all, as an alliance partner from MMD, not one day did President Lungu ever get involved in internal affairs of uh, MMD. Ask Colonel Bumtati, ask Colonel Bumtoro. There were even overtures from us to say, but uh, we are working together. How come you are not interested in what's happening to us as MMD? The president then, President Edgar Lungu, kept on saying, those are your internal issues, resolve them. Never. Actually, the person who, and that's how I'm asking for that interview, ask uh, Muhammad Lungu myself, and possibly I can even challenge that let the uh, media call for uh, such an interview. Myself, Muhammad Lungu, Dr. Nevas Mumba, Mbura Kurima, and Brilli Mutat. Let's discuss that MMD uh, uh, situation. Let's see who a liar is between a man of the color and the rest. Right. Uh, oh. There is a wrong narrative around that issue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, some of the things we don't respond because they can be very personal. You understand? And you expect that people will be noble enough to say, okay, this one we have criticized, yes, it's politics, but that is in there. But I can challenge the media. Call for that interview. Let Muhammad Lungu come because he was directly involved. But you also benefit from Muhammad because he was also directly involved in UNIP. 
He was even a special assistant to Dr. Kaunda. Let him come on, on set. He was also special assistant for media for Dr. Nevers, but then eventually became national secretary. And then Brakulima took over from Muhabi Nungu. I eventually took over from Honorable Mbulakulima. That whole period can be discussed, but these individuals are still alive for the benefit of this country to know the actual truth. What Mr. Aka in the H room and the UPN are doing in PF, it has never happened. It has never happened. At least PF never sponsored any sprinter group in uh, MMD. That I can tell you for a fact. The only challenge which emerged in MMD was that at some point in 2014, when there was an eminent presidential by-election, there, there was a debate on who would be the best flag bearer at that particular point. And the former president, Rupia Banda, was one of those that were being discussed, and never, Dr. Neva Sumumba. Between the two, clearly the Zambian people and the MMD members favored the, uh, President Rupia Banda. And the evidence why they favored him and that he was favored was showed that when former President Rupia Banda could not be allowed to stand and he moved his uh, support to President Edgar Chagalungu, he, Edgar, President Edgar Chagalungu won that election. Never Sumumba, who some of us believed that on the basis that he was a legitimate president, he needed the right to stand, he stood. And you know how many votes he got? The whole country, 14,000 votes. There are more details to that than uh, what, what we're talking about. So the narrative is distorted to suit individuals to try and survive. Misaka in the has been given a wrong script right. to deal with the patriotic flag. Honorable Nagachinda, looking at the fact that now Honorable Malsampe is obviously ready to talk, and we hear that uh, Honorable, I mean, Ambassador Mamba advised that, you know, something be be put uh, you know in writing so that his lawyers can, can, can address the issue. Are we expecting to see a reconciliation between... Listen, the issues in patriotic front will be resolved. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you've noticed, I am very reluctant to even mention Malsam in my uh, discussion because I feel for my brother, Honorable mm -hmm. Malsam. Uh, I don't think he, our enemy uh, and the enemy of democracy here is Malsam. Malsam is just a, a tool. Actually, for me, I sympathize with him that he needs the support of family, he needs the support of all of us, PF. Because his challenge may, may be beyond politics. But he seems he sees somebody that you can trust again as, as a patriotic Listen, friend. I want you to hear me mm -hmm. and hear me correctly. My brother Mausampa needs help. The only reason why he has been taken advantage of is because he needs help. And I'm saying that terms. genuinely. He needs help. Even to make Mausampa your enemy is failure to understand what you're dealing with. When you say he needs help, what do you exactly mean? I mean just that he needs help. He needs help from his family. He needs help from the extended family of Patriotic Fund. For me to even sit here and start discussing Mausamp as if he's my issue. When I look at him and I know what has been going on and I know about him, his life, really I sympathize with him. He's not my enemy. If I had a way, a mechanism to help my brother, I would do that. It's just that as it were, he's been crowded with all opportunists and political bandits who have no empathy towards people when they see there is a challenge. Quickly, we touch on the issue of uh, 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 the former Republican president returning to uh, active politics, ECO, and others feeling that this was the worst decision uh, that the, the former Republican president could ever make. It's a worst mayor for UPND. Mm. Uh, it's just that as it were, nomenclatures can be misleading. Look, the former president has been a subject of UPND, his political uh, strategies and maneuvers from day one after he left, you know, Hero Stadium and handed over power. What he has been subjected to in public domain. And simply because Mr. Aka in the HLM, just after being declared president and eventually in handing over power, one of the early meetings they had, not only with UPND officials, even some of the alliance partners, he said to them, the biggest problem we have and we have to deal with as quickly as possible is the PF and Edgar Chagwanong. Right. So 
they have had President Edgar Chagalunga and UPF as a project. The only thing is that he has exhibited a high level of political naivety because every strategy has deployed up to this Mao Sampa thing has only worked towards the campaigning and campaigning for Edgar Chagarunga and PF. I can tell you one of the greatest assets that we have as PF is that kind of and the UPND. They are doing a good job. Right. And that project of Mao Sampa, they think it's their project. <laughs> it is. Yes, their project in their hands, but working for us. I'm assisting smiling very quickly. Let them go ahead. And to deploy it in 2023, 2026. Hey. Anyway, we can't say much. Let them continue and we wish them well. All right, so Honorable Nakachinda, as we come into the close of our discussion, what, what is it that the Zambian people should be looking forward to in the year 2024, coming from the patriotic front, of course? And as we end 2023, are you still confident as the PF that you still retain power in 2026? Our party president, Dr. Edgar Chagalungu, will be addressing the nation in the next uh, few days or week mm -hmm. uh, to speak to 2024. And uh, I would not want to preempt uh, him. Uh, uh, we have many plans, some of which were a product of the resolution of our central committee that we held a few weeks ago. Um, we will definitely see us more outside the studios in the field uh, to interact with the, uh, our people. We know that it's not to be a very easy um, undertaking looking at the resolve by Mr. Akainde Chilema to use and abuse the police against patriotic front and other opposition political parties. But we have chosen um, uh, and are determined uh, to help the Zaman people, rescue them from the jaws of these economic uh, you know, challenges they are going through, mm -hmm. and that the country cannot be captured again. Uh, we need to free that country. And I must say, um, that I must, uh, you know, uh, commend uh, President uh, HH that yes, yesterday or the day before yesterday at uh, the commemoration of Zambia, the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation, he clearly stated that, uh, you know, uh, he will not tolerate under his watch the introduction of LGBT, you know, values and so on. I think uh, that pronouncement we've been looking for it. Uh, when uh, our, you know, Vice President for the U.S. came, I think, remember, the Zambian people demanding, can you say something? Mm -hmm. Because we've seen unprecedented practices, workshops, and all this taking place. We hope, and I hope, that this time around, I don't know whether it's for the first time or otherwise, you're telling the truth. Because Mizaka in Dechle, when he says good morning, you have to look at your words to check whether indeed that's what he, what he's saying is what he means. But I hope that it was a genuine, you know, proclamation or declaration. Or maybe say the under the anointing, we don't know. But we hope that it can be consistent with that particular uh you know, position. Um it was a good pronouncement and he must follow through. Uh, and let me also take this opportunity to uh, commend and thank the Catholic Church in Zambia, mm -hmm. uh, the Catholic bishops, uh, against uh, what the West have been attempting to do, and clearly stage managed the you know signing of some uh, order around the blessing uh, same, sex same sex. I don't know. They don't even call them couples, but the same sex individuals who have been in a relationship or something. I think. The Catholic leadership on the continent, led by Zambia, Malawi, and I think we've seen, uh, Uganda you well. know, Uganda, we have seen uh, in West Africa, have taken the lead to challenge uh, even the Holy See, as they call it, the Holy Father, um, you know, over that declaration. It makes us uh, proud as a people on the continent because this dual politics do not only affect the actual mainline politics. In a subtle manner, the church has always been embroidered in geopolitics. There is always a distinction between the African church and the, you know, the church from, the, from Europe, from America, and so on. And what they, they resolve 
uh, is usually imposed on Africa and Africa is expected just to swallow whether the pill is bitter or otherwise. This time around, for the first time in the history of uh, this world, Africa has risen to stand up and say no to that imposition, keep it in Europe. We know that it is sponsored because these people who run organizations that accept and propagate LGBT values have a lot of money right. because most of the people are victims to such alien uh, practices are within the affluent uh, families of the globe. And that's how come they have a lot of money at their disposal to push this agenda. Uh, the UPND, remember, we are living on Malama in Parliament debating how that UPND in opposition were sponsored by this organization, the Liberal Network, uh, all that. So our worry was that, uh, and it began to manifest, that uh, UPND in government, they will uh, quickly want to go that way. And they attempted. Let's not even exonerate Mr. Aka indicates them attempted. You know, that's how come those, you know, sorrows, uh, Tony Blairs and so on were frequenting Zambia. I want to believe that uh, uh, maybe those pronouncements on uh, on uh, Friday would be a sign that uh, there could be some divorce papers being processed between some imperialist organization and this regime. It may just be the beginning of the deliverance of UPND right. and by extension maybe uh, we will not see those values implemented in Zambia. I hope Ms. Akainde was being honest. Honorable Nakachinda, it's been a pleasure hosting you. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. With the last, on the last edition of the platform, it's been a pleasure. I'm greatly honored. I hope the voice on uh, the last day of 2023 that we have added to what was happening will help us uh, project even a better path for 2024 and the years ahead. And that Zambia would definitely be a better, better country as God has ordained it. Uh, we know that this country is precious in the hands of God or in the eyes of God, not only for the continent, but the uh, globe as, uh, as well. And I think we must be careful, those of us who are offering ourselves for leadership, never to think that this is just about human you know, effort and human wisdom. God is involved in the affairs of this country, and let's do it in fear of our God. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.